Growing up in Cherokee, sport was everything. We played sports constantly. I just remember always being outside, always playing some sort of sport. And sport was really ingrained into everyday life. You realize that stickball is an all-encompassing event that ties together culture, ritual, religion, spirituality. It really is more than just a game. The rules have remained the same for hundreds of years. The object of the game is to score a goal by taking the ball and running by a small branch in the ground on either end of the field. First to 12 wins. Don't hold the ball for too long or the drivers, like the referees, can hit you with a switch and call a foul to keep the game moving. No timeouts, no pads, and no mercy. For nearly two centuries, it was unthinkable that women would play stickball. That wasn't always the case. Gosh, stickball in the community is legend. It's something that you grow up seeing as a, as a youth. It's always the highlight of the fall festival. It's always something that you anticipate to watch, you make time to watch, and it was always the men. I think it was always part of the rites of passage for, for the men. It's a big part of our culture. It's fun to watch, it's rough, it's, it's entertainment. I went to the games while I was little. I guess like my grandchildren are now. I went to the games with them and uh, I just stay there and watch and it was, it was just always amazed me of how they played and what they done out there. And I always wished I could do it, but we were forbidden to do that. We have uh, oh, about 15, 20 men on each side right now, but all of them won't get to play. They only use about 10, 10 players. As you will see, they have no pads, n nothing to protect them. The only thing they have is their shorts on and the sticks. And their sticks, they, sometimes they use them for their defense. You know, they can't use it like a club that like they used a long time ago. They had to have two, two hands on the stick. In 1760, a British lieutenant, Henry Timberlake, volunteered to serve as an emissary to the Cherokee. Before he returned to London with three Cherokee chiefs in 1792, he detailed the Cherokee culture, dress, food, song, and stickball. In his memoirs, he wrote about Cherokee women playing stickball. I was not a little pleased likewise with their ball plays, in which they show great dexterity, especially when the women played, who pulled one another about to the no small amusement of an European spectator. That's right, women's games. This is Jerry Wolf. Hearing him call a stickball game is a tradition as strong as the festival itself. Jerry holds the title of beloved man. He is the voice of Cherokee stickball and one of the most revered men in the community. Jerry has been instrumental in keeping the sport alive. In retirement, Jerry began to work at the Museum of the Cherokee Indian. It opened up his life. It opened up his childhood even more because all the things that he'd learned from his parents was um, enhanced by the stuff that he learned at the museum. But it also rekindled that interest that he had in stickball. Um, started talking more about stickball. He started creating ball sticks and, uh, and he encouraged people to play. In the early 2000s, Patsy French, our cousin Patsy French, was working with Father at the Museum. 
and she was very interested in finding out information about women. Did women ever play stickball? And he said, well, yes. The tribe banned the women from playing stickball because they were too, they were truly too brutal with one another. He told her about, you know, the last place the women had played and why they were banned from playing. And, uh, and so she said, well, I think that it, it would be a great idea if we go ahead and, and get going with it again. And so she started sort of asking around and pulling people together, pulling women together. It was the Arch Girls that had approached me and said, hey, would you be interested in, in playing with us? Of course, yes. At that point, I was still young and athletic and agile. And, Gosh, it seemed like such an honor to be asked and to actually get out there and have your own sticks and to be able to participate in something that was almost taboo. A friend of mine just kind of said, hey, we're gonna go to stickball practice for the girls. I've always been competitive and athletic and just interested in that. And I was like, sure, I'll, I'll go, I don't care. Lachey had called me and says, uh, Mom, will you go to the ball field down there next to the BIA and let them know that I'm not going to be there today, but I will be there tomorrow. So when I come back, I go to the ball field and all these girls come running toward me and they go, are you playing? Are you playing? And I'm going, I don't know what I'm playing. You know, and they go, we're going to play ball. And I said, what kind of ball? And they go, ending ball. And I go, you're not supposed to. And they said, no, but we're going to. Dorsey was our coach. She was kind of the one that everyone looked to to teach how we play, what we're supposed to do when we're on the field, what we're not supposed to do. I just taught them how the men play. The only way I know how is the way my grandfather was taught. Darcy always made us go out and we had to start working out probably the beginning of August. And we ran games and practiced for about six weeks. We hit. We hit hard and we, we wanted to know what we were going to be up against because in a real game, our competition wasn't going to just touch us and freeze tag us. They were going to hit us. Once I got out there and practiced for the first time and really started understanding the rules, it was just like instant. It was like we were always meant to play. After 130 years, a game that was given to Cherokee women returned. I was on uh, the original Big Coke team with Robin, my sister, and the, the very first game, it was awesome. It was exhilarating. Block, block four. Oh. To, to run and to be a part of that, you know, that game, it was amazing. And, uh, and I just loved it. It's just a different rush. I mean, just your adrenaline's going, and you're just constantly going. It's physical. Yeah, that's him. Go him. Good for him. If you're paired up good, the game can last for a while. I wouldn't say it really compares to to anything else that I've played. You had to be ready to to protect. You had to be ready to know where your team is. You had to be ready to know if you're in there and you're scrapping for the ball to kick the ball out. You have to know where your fast ones are and be able to put the ball down the field. Oh, I was so nervous. Just learning how to pick up the ball with the stick, um, learning how to hold the stick, um, the whole motions of having to pick it up above your knees and not being able to grab it with your hands, that took a lot to get used to. And then once you learn how to pick it up, learning how to pick it up on a run, learning how to use your left hand, learning how to pick it up when there's eight other sticks in there going after the ball, you can tackle people, you can hold them down. I mean, the women played hard too. I mean, they played rough. They played rougher than the guys, I think. You got it, baby. You got it, baby. Come on. Oh, woo! Come here, baby. A lot of these um, ball players that were on our team is basically family. Just that close kinship. Yeah. And it just made it even stronger when we started playing together and protecting each other out there on that yeah. field, on and off the field. 
It wasn't just a sport, it was something, it was a lot deeper. It was just a part of who we were, who we are as people. We're a sisterhood. So to be a part of that was just an honor in itself. And to actually step foot on the field and be given your own sticks, it's like your time, you have arrived. Uh, and that was something that I'll remember probably for the rest of my life. For a brief stint, we, we kind of got a lot of flack because we, we did play. There was controversy about whether or not we should be on the field, um, how we should uh, conduct ourselves while being on the field. Um, a lot of times it was shunned and a lot of times people, I think, they came out just to see how the women were going to play or how they were going to act or if they would have the same type of respect for the game and carry out like the men. For women to go and exude those same type of mannerisms, it was, it was kind of looked down upon. I think that it was shocking to the people watching. And I tell you, you know, my experience with it was absolute joy. And if you ever played it, you would be amazed at how it makes you feel to be in that, you know, running on the field with those ball sticks. And um, so the women did not want to give that up. I mean, why would you? I think that the criticism, we tried, to, we tried not to give it power. Once you allow something to have power over you, you allow it to affect you. It can dictate your mood, it can dictate how you perform. So we as, as a team tried to stay away from the negative. We didn't need the negative. You have the negative, you take the negative on the field. Women's stickball didn't happen overnight and it wasn't banned overnight. I'm not exactly sure how it finally changed and the, and the game, the women's stickball was finally actually uh, banned. I, I really don't have the answer for that. I don't think it was really uh, at, the, at the end, like, okay, this is our last, our last year playing. I think it just kind of fizzled out for different reasons and it's never really picked back up. My grandpa always told me, when you have kids, you know when they're ready to go, they'll pick up a stick and go out there and mm -hmm. play ball. Don't hold yeah. them back, let them go. And that's exactly what mine did. And it was played many, many years ago before the settlement of the Europeans that came to this country. Today, we still keep the tradition going. And the case is that they have to land on the zone, that they have to go to the I took Odie out when he was two. I was nervous that they'd be like, ah, oh, he's too little, he's like just a baby. But last year at the fair, he scooped the ball up. And I don't think anyone realized that he even had it, and he just took off running. And he scored, he went through the goalpost, and one of the moms had gotten pictures of his first goal. All of the big boys were lined up in the background, and all of their faces and everyone cheering and that, it was just like, okay, that's what we're here for. They'll have those boys on their side as long as he's playing. And that's something that I'm glad that he will get to experience because when I played, that's something that I experienced. We're doing something, even if it's not, you know, we're not doing everything, we're carrying on our tradition somehow. So as he grows older, and my hope is that he'll continue to play until he's an adult and he'll be able to carry on those traditions. We're not just letting it die and just sitting on the sidelines and cheering. I think anything that you can hold on to as a Cherokee or just a Native American, 
is really meaningful, and that's just a beautiful thing for us because we don't have much of that. You know that they're keeping something alive that you once took part in. It's overwhelming because it's a lot of pride. I believe that whatever culture that we can bring out of who we are today, that we should do it. We should try to engage ourselves, engage our bodies and our minds, and, uh, and try to get back to who we are. Every time I pull out them sticks, we all get chills and ready to pick them up. A lot of people do still turn to us and ask us if we think we're ever going to get a team back together and play again. Cherokee women, we're, we're something else. We're, we're strong, we're athletic, we're agile, we're able, um, disciplined. And I would hope that we would be able to have that, that sport revisited, but I don't know.